What is up guys, welcome back to another day out on the water. If you leave me to my own device, I never had to compromise. The city is like a jungle, I gotta make it mine. Put my fears right out of sight, beat the hustle, better get it right. In a game where the strong survive. So in today's episode, I'm actually doing something different. We're not down in a lake or a river. We're actually down by the sea. We're on an estuary mark, and today we're gonna to do some bait fishing for flounder. We've probably got a couple more weeks until the flounder push out into deeper water. So we thought, why not come down and have a couple of hours? And I'm really excited about today because I haven't found a fish for what's probably 15 or 20 years. So it'll be an interesting video. So stick with it, stay tuned and enjoy this episode. Got a three hook uh, trace for bottom fishing. Uh, zip slider with a small wash weight. Don't need two clips, so clip one down. Zip slider there for the stop, so when the fish pulls, won't feel the weight. And then I will trace itself. Two old blue Aberdeens, a couple of beads, whatever your preference is. But uh, to keep it on the bottom, then we've got a wee weight. And a couple more beads. And basically, we're going to bait these up now. It's not a casting rig, it's just a uh, close-in fishing for, oh, yeah, don't touch that, close-in fishing for flounders. The tide is hopefully going to start making, and we got some quality bait for H.R. Jones in Clidach. Nice pound of uh, mudworm. We picked some clams up, we've dug some uh, lug down here, which is great. So we'll put Maddie's just sliding them up half a dozen at least probably on each uh, hook and we're going to top uh, Maddie's off with a leg hopefully to keep them on a little bit longer there you go and we'll do exactly the same we've got a couple of clams uh, they came out with the worms when we were digging mud worm. Uh, we were topping one of them with clams. And obviously the amount of cockles that surround here and clams that uh, flounders tend to feed. They're going to feed quite avidly now because it's coming up to the breeding season so they're probably going to pack a bit of weight down uh, before they go out into deeper water. And here's the first bite of the day. And I think, yeah, you got a, a lovely dinner sized flounder. So there he is, first fish of the day. Bit small, so we'll get him back in. Right then, so what we're doing today is basically fishing low water to high. On an estuary mark like the one we're on, it's really important that you understand tides and understand what that means. On this particular estuary mark, on a spring, it really pushes through quickly and you can get easily cut off. So we've chosen a neat tide today. We're fishing low to high. We were supposed to have rain today, but it actually hasn't kicked in. So we've got a really peaceful and tranquil part of the day to fish, basically. So Jeremy's had that flounder already. A lad down the road from us, he had a nice bass, about three and a half pound. So we'll see what the session continues to bring. You know, we're setting up a spare rig. Uh, again, probably just the, the competition side of uh, us coming out. Uh, spare rig, you bait it up, hang it on, uh, on your tripod ready, 
So as soon as you get uh, well, either a time limit, a lot of people will say that oh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes is enough for your bait to be out there. If there's uh, crabs or bugs in the water that's uh, going to attack your bait, you need to be checking it regular. So by having a, a spare rig set up, as soon as you pull your li line in, possibly fish, no fish, and then you just swap over rigs, cast it out, and then you bait up uh, the rig you've just taken off. There we go, first double of the day. <laughs> Hopefully, not the last. Hopefully they get a little bit bigger. Still got the bottom leader on at the moment. Uh, three hook fishing solid on the deck. And it looks like that might, might be the difference. They've got to be hard on, not fishing a great deal of wet uh, depth. So I'd say that they need to be right on the sand. It's not even exactly dinner. <laughs> as soon as we got to the, the river, or estuary, uh, we put a stick down right on the water's edge just to give us an indication of when the tide has turned. So at the moment it turns, that's the time you start, need to start keeping an eye out of. It's not going to get cut off behind you. There's not a, a flow of water that's coming in behind that you haven't seen. Uh, especially on a new venue or a venue that you haven't fished for a long time. It's, uh, it's just it's a simple thing. Put a stick or anything, even a pile of stones, right on the water's edge. One, it'll tell you when the tide is made, so when you hopefully you'll have more interest in your bait. And two, that you can time to be awake, not to go to sleep and daydream with the tide coming in, possibly behind you. Okay, so that is the end of the session. And you know what? For January, it's been nice to be out. I've got to say that because I only caught one fish and it was the smallest fish in the sea. But Jeremy, Jeremy managed to catch a few more, didn't you? I did manage a sharp four. <laughs> Not overdoing it, but uh, it was nice. nice. Nice to get out. Cracking day in January, I've got to be honest. Nice to something different as well, wasn't it? Somewhere different. Something, you never know what you're going to get with sea fishing and that's always a... Uh, Always a plus, always interesting. Yeah. So guys, if you enjoyed this different style of content, uh, we are hoping to bring you a bit more of this this year. But if you did enjoy it, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button. My name is Rhys. My name is Jerry. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video. It's ground that they're walking, ain't cutting through their skin. They're hunting down their prey through the bitter end. Grounded, they're walking, they're cutting through their skin.